Hi, good morning everyone. Welcome for RTL online training and placement. Subscribe for this channel to get the latest versions and latest interview questions as well as the jobs and training and placement details. We have discussed in two demo sessions previous. We talked about what is FSM in the second demo, how we can work with the new users and new implementation projects, so how we can create this all. So today we are going to talk about how to configure organization structure in fusion applications. Organization structure in fusion application. Organization structure is nothing but your client uh, company hierarchy. Your client company hierarchy we are trying to understand. So whenever we are implementing this ERP product, this organization structure is a common for finance, supply chain management, human capital, CRM, for anybody. It's a common, it's a base for the product, right? So uh, whether human capital or finance consultants, first you have to configure this organization structure, then we have to go with uh, doing the individual module setups. We call it as, uh, Enterprise Structure Configurator. We call it as Enterprise Structure Configurator. Whenever we want to configure the Enterprise Structure, there are two options given by Oracle. One is automatic, nothing but through wizard, you can go for configure. Another one is a manual process. Most of the clients, whenever we are working in the real time, will go with automatic. If it is small client, if it is a big client, we'll go for manual process. So in the interest, they may ask you, tell me, have you configured enterprise structure for your client? Generally, it is done by the senior level functional consultant. It's nothing but more than eight, nine years experience. Architect level people will configure because this is the base, right? So configuration of enterprise structure is not a complex task, but understanding your client's business, providing the solution to the client, suggesting the best hierarchy to maintain their business process, we will be using this enterprise structure process. So gather the requirement from the client, analysis, providing the solution and get approvals. This process will take time and it needs a more experience very senior level consultants can perform this particular task okay but still as a functional consultant we cannot say that we are not involved in the enterprise structure configuration we can say that yes we did we interacted with the client business users we gathered the requirement we prepared the document we got approval from the client after that we started uh, configure the enterprise structure in the applications. That's how we can go for explain. And in fact, we are going to do it in our uh, training sessions. We'll do it by using automatic, how we can do it in this session. Next uh, regular sessions, tomorrow onwards, we'll go for manual process, manually one by one, how we can go for process. Whether you want to configure the enterprise structure by using wizard or manual, it doesn't matter. First, we have to understand your client's business. First, we need to understand the client's business. What is their sector? Is it banking sector or insurance or uh, logistics or transportation or mm, telecom or any motors, manufacturing, automobiles, education that we have to understand. Once we understand the client's business, then we have to ask our client how many countries they are doing the business, number of countries, number of countries they are doing the business that we have to understand. After we identify the number of countries, then how many places they have registered the company. Generally, the clients will have registration in one country, one place. They might have multiple companies. So they have to go for multiple registrations. For example, the client has started business in Singapore. First, they started electronics. 
spare parts. They have registered the company. They started the business. They registered the office. They started business. After two years, they wanted to go with uh, second-hand car sales. But that will not come under uh, spare parts. So they have started a new company under the same enterprise, but the company is new company. So the, like that, whenever the clients are doing the business, they can have either one company in the country or they can have multiple companies that we have to ask them. Is your company is registered with the government only once or one, one company is registered or multiple companies? So here uh, the client is telling in India, I have registered my three companies, Hyderabad, Bangalore and Chennai in US, California and Los Angeles. Two companies we have registered. And then branches, obviously uh, when the companies, they start the business, it depends on the requirement, uh, depends on the expand, they'll try to open the branches, right? Different branches uh, for their companies. That branches, uh, we have to ask our client, how many branches, 20, 30, 40, 100. Those all branches we are going to define within the legal entity over here. Within the legal entity, we are going to define here it is. And uh, once the branches are defined, every branch, uh, obviously departments will be there, right? Sales department, admin department, accounts department, QA department. Mm -hmm. There will be a transportation. So number of department depends on the business, what they are doing. There will be a department, okay? So once uh, we discuss with the client, we need to gather all this information and we have to prepare a document. Depends on the requirement, we have to define this hierarchy and we have to gather all the organization's information. When I say organization, the companies, branches, departments, legal entities, this all we need to gather from the client. Once we gather all this uh, requirement, then we will go for understand that setup here. So when client says that this is my company, then that we call it as an enterprise. In fusion applications, we call it as a headquarters. Okay, so your company is a headquarters. Let's say Tata is an enterprise. Within that uh, Tata, we have Tata Motors, we have Tata Consultancy Services, we have Tata Power, we have Tata Telecom, we have Tata Insurance, like that. So what is enterprise here? Tata. These all are companies. Tata Motors is a separate company. When you open the Tata Motors company, you can't run the business uh, consultancy. If you want to do the consultancy business, again, you have to register your company. If you want to run the power business, you cannot use this company. Again, you have to go for register the separate company. And telecom business, you can't use the power company for telecom business, separate company we have to. But you can keep all these companies within this enterprise, Tata Enterprise. Okay, so the enterprise is nothing but a top level organization where we are going to register all our companies here. There will be only one enterprise. We cannot create multiple enterprises. It's not possible. We will be having only one enterprise here. We'll be having only one enterprise here. It is. Within the enterprise, there will be a division. Division is nothing but the area of the business. Now, client is telling, now Jirox company is there, Jirox Corporation in two countries. One is India, another one is in US. Jirox Corporation India, I would like to have only separate uh, division. Jirox US is a separate division, either for profit and loss point of view, or either for dividing the business and trying to understand point of view, we wanted to divide the business. So division is nothing but an area of the business. We can divide our client's business into the different parts. But this is optional. I have specified in the bracket O, o stands for optional. O stands for optional. 
Okay. So this divisions uh, we are going to have only when there is a features uh, functionality in the application, but Oracle has not yet provided. Uh, there is no features uh, about the divisions. We don't have any features about the uh, divisions. Here it is. We have all all enterprise divisions not required over here. Divisions not required over here it is. Okay. So once the client says that I want divisions, then we can go for define. But we do, we cannot use anywhere this divisions. So we can leave these options. Uh, in this example, if we want to uh, say divisions are there, Xerox India is one division, Xerox US is another division, we can specify it. But divisions are optional, as I said, even if uh, I have not involved any time divisions creation in my last uh, seven implementations, I have not done any time. But in case if they ask you in the interview, I have not created divisions anytime because uh, we don't have any functionality around that. Even if you create a division, you don't have a functionality to use this division anywhere. Okay, that's the reason we are not going to work with this. Next, legal entity is nothing but a companies. We'll ask our client, how many places you are registered your company? In India, the client is telling Chennai one legal entity, Bangalore one, Hyderabad one, not branches, not branches, companies. Branches, you can open 100, you don't need permission. You don't need any legal permission from the government authorities. When I say government authority, for example, you want to start a company in India, first you need to take the permission from ROC, registered of companies. There is a government legal authority. From, for, from them, we need to get a permission. So we have to go for register. We have to mention that I'm going to start the business. This is my company name. And this is the business. These are the areas I'm going to do it like that. Then you need to take the permission from the GST, PAN card, and then local corporation access permission, labor uh, permission, ESI. Like that, there will be a number of uh, uh, you know government authorities. We need to get it from them. Okay. So here, my client is telling I have registered my business in three companies in India. That three are defined and US two companies. That's what we call it as a legal entity. Then within the legal entity, there will be a branches. Branches, we don't need permission from the government. Everywhere you can open that. You know, you can just have an outlet. But when you are doing the business, for example, you are selling some goods in Sikindrabat, Kukatpalli, SR Nagar and ES. Four branches are there. Whatever the business you do, legally, that invoices, sales, accounts, everything, address will come from here whatever the legal entity, whatever your company registration address is there from there. For example, you go for any shopping mall, almost in every shopping mall, there will be a shopper stop. Those all are branches. Actual shopper stop companies registered in Mumbai. That is their legal entity. So wherever you go to shopping mall and you find an outlet uh, branch that we call it as a business unit in Fission Applications. Once you buy the products over there, and if you check the bill address will be there. That address you don't find where you have purchased your product. That address uh, will be the main legal address, the main legal company address. They won't mention this address on the bill. Maybe they have specified a uh, branch office, but uh, the main invoice bill will be generated based on the legal address. Okay. So the legal entity is nothing but a company. Within that, we'll have a branches, nothing but a business units. And within the business units, of course, there will be a warehouses, nothing but a godowns. Like uh, when we go for a shopper stop uh, branch, there will be items. Once these items are gone, means once sales are done, again, the goods has to come from godown, right? They will be maintaining separate godown in the warehouse, either within the city or outcuts or in the same building somewhere. That is called warehouse. We call it as the inventories. Generally, that is required for supply chain and manufacturing consultants. We don't need it. Actually, after business unit, what could be the organization? Inventories, sub-inventories, like that. So here, after BU, then there will be a reference data set. So this is technical. Technical in the sense, logical. Logical organization. Providing the security. Reference data 
security rds reference data set so we are going to attach this rds to the business units we are going to attach the rds to the bu in rds reference data set we are going to have all the objects whatever we have like we will be having departments jobs grades and locations all these four objects we cannot attach to the branch directly so what we have to do is first we need to go for assign to reference data set assign this reference data set to the business units assign the business units to the legal entities assign this legal entity to the ledger and the lds ledger is nothing but accounting information this is required uh, for finance consultant generally we don't need much so ledger are going to be used to maintain our accounting information in a proper format so we are going to have currency calendar chart of accounts and compliance method and that once the ledger is done then we are going to have it is a legislative data group so we are going to have legislative data group here what is this ldg ldg stands for legislative data group where we are going to maintain all our payroll related information once you run the payroll to your employees and pay the salaries to the employees then we are going to maintain all this information at ldg level for one country there will be a one legislative data group okay we can also have multiple but generally we will find one but generally we will find only one over here it is okay so this is uh, about the legislative data group as well as the ledger we are going to have a ledger here it is every company must have one ledger to maintain accounts information every company must have one ldc to maintain the salary information legislation rules so if you are doing a business in singapore you must to follow as per singapore uh, legislation rules according to that rules you should pay the salaries to your employees we cannot uh, go for override the rules or uh, skip the rules as per the legislation right that and then of course if the divisions are there we will assign the legal entity to the divisions otherwise we can leave it the enterprise is the top uh, all these organizations whatever you are doing all this comes under the same price you if you are working in fusion applications for example you are creating a legal entity the system will not ask you this legal entity comes under which enterprise the legal entity comes under which enterprise it won't ask you because there will be only one enterprise all the legal entities comes under the same enterprise all be used comes under same enterprise you might have created 400 departments but all the 400 departments comes under same enterprise no question of second enterprise okay so there will be only one enterprise that's why when you perform any transaction in the application all these transactions comes under the same enterprise there is no question of uh, multiple enterprises that's why you don't ask you anywhere uh, and give the enterprise name uh, under which enterprise this bu comes under which enterprise this uh, jobs comes it won't ask you okay so like this we will find the enterprise structure when we are working in the fusion applications is clear everyone any doubts you have about the enterprise you can unmute yourself and ask me for doubts Yeah, it's clear, sir. Sir, related to motors and consulting power, like you mentioned under Tata, it is motors consulting power. Companies. Yeah, where it will be coming over here? Legal entities. Enterprise entity. will be enterprise will be only Tata, right? Yes, legal entities. Okay. Here, Tata Motors. Here, uh, consultancy and Tata Power. that means if uh, con uh, consultancy is in india and us there will be two consultancies which will be created yes 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 you know, tata consultancy india is one legal entity tata consultancy us 
another legal entity. Because in if you a registered company in India, uh, we can do business only in India. We cannot perform the business in US, right? Again, we have to open the company in US. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> okay. So this is about uh, the enterprise structure process. We have a tool, as I this as I said, uh, uh, automatic uh, wizard based. Okay, ESC. ESC stands for Enterprise uh, Structure Configurator. So we are going to use that now. And by using this, uh, we can go for configure the structure as one time setup. Let me log into the applications here. Go to setup and maintenance here. Go to implementation project. We created yesterday one implementation. We don't find this many implementations in the real time. Projects. Project is just to maintain our setups, not more than that. Okay. So here we are going to perform the task. This task names are important. The entries they'll ask what is the task name to establish enterprise structure. So we'll be using this. Go to the task here. Establish enterprise structures. Open this task here. Now I can see that there are three enterprise structures are defined. But there is only one enterprise structure loaded successfully. When we work for any client, there will be a, only one enterprise structure is allowed. You can create multiple, but all will be in draft status in the sense not loaded status it will be in the not loaded status okay so it's going to be in the not loaded status and uh, once we configure the structure successfully we can load but only one enterprise structure we can load successfully into the applications you work for any client so whenever you are working in the project you don't find multiple there will be only one enterprise structure loaded once it is loaded we cannot modify the structure from this task for example, you have created three legal entities. Now client is asking, I want to change the legal identifier number or name, or I want to add one more legal entity, or I want to disable existing legal entity or business unit. We cannot perform from this task. We have to do it manually. We'll be discussing that in our training, how we can perform that here. Okay. So right now what we are going to do is we are going to configure our enterprise structure here, but we will not be able to load it because it will show the error message. Uh, in fact, it won't allow you to see disabled load enterprise structure. What is the difference between loading and not loaded? If the enterprise structure is loaded, you can use that organizations while hiring the employees. Nothing but your company name, your business units, jobs, departments, locations, positions, these all things can be done. But if it is not loaded, that will not be deployed or that will not be populated in our front end. It is just temporarily stored in the tables, interface tables, because already one enterprise structure loaded, right? That's the reason, okay. So what I'm trying to do is, I'm going to show you how to configure, but loading is general. Just if we click the button, it will, if no enterprise structure is there, it will load. If not, then we have to go forward. Click on this here. I'm going to specify this is start our enterprise. First, I'm defining the enterprise details. Okay. We are here, data enterprise. Primary industry. So I'm going to mention they are into construction, 
primary headquarters, United States. What is the legal headquarters name? This is your enterprise information. Legally, what is this? Uh, Corporation USA headquarters. And uh, is your enterprise is having uh, more legal entities or only one legal entity? So if they have only one legal entity, one country, this setup is fine because uh, we have, if your client says that I'm running a business in only one country, I have only one company, okay, I have only one company and one country, then that's fine. So you have already specified your company details and you already entered your company registration details. You can say directly, we can complete setup for a single legal entity in single country. That's a simple, it's a small clients. If there are some clients who are having very small business, they can go ahead. If the client is having multiple legal entities, multiple countries, then we need to continue with the interview to set up more legal entities. When I say interview, this model, we call it as an interview model. This we call it as an interview model over here. It is. Okay. So click next button. And we are going to define the divisions over here. Let's, I'm defining two divisions here. Tata India. Tata USA, but it's not mandatory. As I said, divisions are not mandatory. After we define the divisions, then what we'll define? Legal entities, nothing but a companies. So here we can create uh, automatically legal entities or we can go for enter manually. So depends on the requirement. I'm going for generate automatically. Uh, I'm going to mention one is uh, Tata India, another one is Tata US, two legal entities. So the client is having one company in India, one company is in US, not more than that. This all our legal information will be specifying. So one is the uh, headquarter, this is ultimate holding company. We have headquarters. The remaining is left legal address we are going to have here. When legal entity is nothing but a companies that we are going to define. So after the legal entities, we have to define the business units, nothing but a branches. Click next button. So what I'm trying to do is for every legal entity, one branch I'm creating, nothing but uh, one BU. We can add more, we can also more. What I said, uh, for every legal entity, automatically system should generate one BU, one business unit. After generating the business units, if at all you want to create a more business units, you can create, later also we can create. For example, client is starting two more business units after six months or after one year or after two years that we can go for add again. So it can we can add always a business unit, but not from this task. If this task is one time setup, one time setup. Once you configure your enterprise structure from this task and upload successfully, it will not allow you to open it again. You can read, but it will not allow you to modify the organization hierarchy or to do it manually one by one. That's what the first part is, global HR part. Okay. 
So now the business units are done. Reference data sets are a very simple concept. When we create that manually, we can easily understand. So at this point of time, I'll, I'll tell simple. Uh, whenever you want to assign 100 departments to your branch, your client says that I have 100 uh, departments, 100 departments, OK? And I have 40 branches. I want to assign all these 100 branches for Sorry, 100 departments for all the 40 depart 40 branches. For first business unit, we have to add 100 departments. For a second business unit, again 100 we have to add. For third business unit, again we have to add 100. If I do like this, how many departments will be created in the system? For first BU, 100 entries. Second, another 100. So it will be 4,000. 4,000 records will be entered in the system. What Oracle says, instead of doing like that, just group your departments. All 100 departments, group it. One set will come. That is called reference data set. You will get one set. Assign this set to the BU. How many times we have to assign? 40 times. You have to group your departments as a set. Attach this set to the business unit, attach the set to this BU, 1, 2, 3, 4, 40 times we have to assign and go for it. This is how it will work, right? So whenever we are working in the application, reference data sets will be used to assign the set of data. Set means group, you are going to group the data. What data we are going to group? Four, four objects, what are that? Departments, jobs, grades, locations all this depart all these objects we are going to group it and once we group it we'll assign to the business so instead of doing one by one we will just group it and assign it that is called reference data set there is a common set provided by oracle we'll talk about that later no it's not required i'm going to assign this uh, reference data sets to the business units as well as to the locations also will assign to the locations here okay so once we create this enterprise structure we can find the result review result what is our enterprise tata enterprise how many divisions you have there are two divisions how many legal entities how many business units we can find so this is our structure we have defined tata enterprise here data divisions, legal entities, business units, and the corresponding reference data sets. This is how the enterprise structure is going to be created. I took just 15, 20 minutes time for creating, but in the real time also same, but interacting with the client, gather the requirement, preparing the document, get the approval from the client, final decision, Freezing the enterprise structure requirement will take at least uh, two weeks, two to three weeks time. Then after that, we can create, once it is done, simple way we can go for do this. Now, enterprise structure has created successfully here, Tata Enterprise, right? But still, what is the status? Not loaded. Because your enterprise structure, already one enterprise structure is there. Someone has already created and loaded successfully. Now, if we want to load, it won't allow. See, if I go to task disabled, the task is disabled here. So it is not going to allow us to go for loading into the applications here. Is clear, everybody? Any doubts you have in the enterprise structure, what we have done here? This is how we will go for gather the requirements and uh, prepare the documents. We call it as a OEM methodology. We have separate methodology, Oracle Unified uh, Methodology. 
it has got predefined templates requirement gathering templates we will be using those templates and prepare the document and we will go for prepare that so what was the difference between not loaded and loaded if it is loaded uh, all your organizations will be published in the application you can start using those organizations while hiring employee if not loaded your information is there in the temporary table only it is not verified and once it is verified then it will load into the main tables here okay. sir uh, if you don't mind you click on this uh, tata enterprise sir once yes there there is one uh, create business unit is there no sir to go on yes yeah if you, you go there you can there is some uh, yeah there is some uh, uh, drop down sir yeah if you click on this drop down means uh, uh, there is so many options create business unit Mm -hmm. Yeah, you go through that task, sir. If you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. Is here, yeah. business. Yeah. You you if you click on this drop down means uh, there is some list of values. What is that mean, sir? Country and division. Yes. Sir. If you want to, if you want to create a business unit based on your countries, for example, you have five countries. Your client is telling in every country I have only one business unit. You can create based on the country five business units. Five business units you can create. Default. This is when you are trying to create automatically. Automatically means system will create number of business units. You have to tell to the system how many business units you want. Now you are telling to the system depends on the number of legal entities. If there are ten legal entities, let's create ten business units. the or depends on the country if there are five countries let's create five business units that's what you are giving the instruction to the system to create business units automatically i have selected legal entity so what happened system has selected three legal entities are there for three legal entities it has created three legal uh, three business units if you choose the country what happened you will find how many countries two countries according to that it will go for create you can choose whatever business units that is just to giving the instruction to the system how it has to select the number of business units creation in the system okay, sir. thank you sir. yes sir please sir, what is the actual difference between the loaded and unloaded Uh, once the enterprise structure is loaded it is successfully implemented in the application you can start using this enterprise structure you can hire employees to your legal entity business unit and all not loaded means uh, still your information still your enterprise structure organizations are not verified whether the hierarchy is properly defined or not whether the address whatever we have given is a proper format or not it's not going to it's not verified or it's not created internal hierarchy will not be created. so we cannot use this enterprise so when as i said there will be only one enterprise structure always for finance or hcm entire the base the same enterprise structure everybody has to follow finance people or hcm or supply the same legal entities they have to get same business units same departments and same ledgers ldz divisions if created of course enterprise will be only one so there will be only one enterprise structure we cannot create multiple enterprise structures okay sir yes sir uh, means like uh, while gathering from the client these are these uh, like these are the regular questions we are going to be asked yes for. yes we are going to ask uh, what is your enterprise name so here no point, no chance for how many enterprises so we'll ask only one question what is your enterprise information where is it where it is headquartered and what is your primary business what is your uh, enterprise legal information and then we will go for create an enterprise next if they are expecting any divisions we'll tell them that we do not have any functionality right now but still you want to create we can create that after that legal entities we are going for 
So nothing but a company's legal entity identified this article. Okay. Fun guys, uh, thank you. Thanks for your uh, valuable time you have spent yeah. in the last three Sir, days. Last yes, please. Yeah, like apart from this topic, uh, I have like a few a few questions, sir. Can I ask, sir? Yeah, please go ahead. Like, uh, 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 like when we are when we are uh, subscribed from uh, Oracle, 